Good morning, Hank. It's Wednesday. In your video on Monday, you talked about lots of ways I can keep from linguistically embarrassing myself, and I appreciate that, but I want to add one small little thing. As you pointed out, the word effect can be used either as a noun or a verb, but I would like to give you some advice. When you want to use effect as a verb, don't. Ever. No matter what. So, because you know, I write books for a living. Those books on occasion win awards. They are translated into many languages and they are often nicely reviewed around the world. I mean, the New York Times Book Review once called one of my books Almost Miraculous. To which I say, Almost. So Hank, I tell you this not to brag or to encourage nerdfighters to buy my books, although there are links to do so in the doobly-doo, but only to point out that being a professional person of letters, such as myself, does not mean that you will not on occasion make hideous grammatical mistakes such as the double negative in that sentence. Crap double negatives! Right, so three years ago the Yeti and I moved from New York City to Indianapolis, and we had a lot more space in Indianapolis, which meant that we had to buy a lot of furniture. So one day, a couple months after we moved to Indianapolis, we're in a furniture store, and I say to Sarah, do you think we need a chest or drawers? And she says, do I think we need a what? A chest or drawers? A what or drawers? A chest or drawers, Sarah. Do you think we need a chest or drawers? Then she looks over at me, the man she is contractually obligated to spend the rest of her life with, and says, well, we might need a chest of drawers. Oh, chest of drawers. Not Chester drawers. Also, I was fully about 25 years old when I realized that the hors d'oeuvres I was eating at various functions were the exact same thing as the hors d'oeuvres I was reading about in books. And every time I would read hors d'oeuvres in a book, I would think, that doesn't sound like a very sophisticated thing to be doing. That sounds like something you order at a brothel. Hold on, I gotta let Willie in. Hey, Willie, treat! Come on, get the treat. Get the treat. Good news and bad news, Willie. Good news? You're inside. Bad news? The treat is a lie. Hank, while we're on the topic, I just want to mention who and that. Who describes a person, that describes everything other than a person. I mentioned this because one of my favorite bands is called the Avett Brothers, or possibly the Yvette Brothers, or possibly the Avett Brothers. They sing the song that I really love, that I really love, not who I really love, but the lyrics infuriate me. Because at one point they sing, I want to have friends that I can trust. Friends you can trust like what? Like a tomato plant or a Super Nintendo or a tennis racket? Because if you mean a person, it's who, not that! But let me just acknowledge that the job of grammar and pronunciation is to make language as clear and efficient and transparent as possible, right? But if we're all constantly correcting each other's grammars and being really snotty about it, then people stop talking because they start to be petrified that they'll make some kind of terrible grammatical error. And that's precisely the opposite of what grammar is supposed to do, which is to facilitate clear communication. So I propose that in comments today, instead of recounting all of the times that we mixed up the words orgasm and organism in biology class, which happened a lot according to the comments from your Monday video, we all come together and non-snottily ask and answer grammatical and pronunciation questions we've always had. For instance, as you've probably noticed, I don't know how to pronounce the Avid Brothers or Avid Brothers or Avid bro theirs. I also, despite working with words for a living, do not have an A number one handle on the difference between lie and lay. So what don't you understand? And if you know the answers, share them, non-snottily. Hank, I'm on my way to Wapaka, Wisconsin, where I'll be speaking on Friday and Saturday. More info in the doobly-doo. But Edgar will see you on Friday, except not really, because his eyes are closed.